Hi guys, we're continuing with 2-1 solving one-step equations. In this video, we're going to focus on the inverse operations of multiplication and division. Don't forget to write down your notes. Here is our third example of the day. Just like on our previous video, I'm going to draw a red line going through the equal sign so that I can very clearly see what is the left side and what is the right side. It's also important to identify where the variable is. In this problem, my variable is on the left side. And right next to my letter is a number four. Now, when you have a number and a letter right next to each other, that means they're being multiplied together. Our goal is to get the letter X by itself. So I need to get rid of that multiplied at number four. The inverse operation of multiplication is division. So I will be dividing once on the left and once on the right by the number four. On the side where the variable was, the four and the divided by four, those will cancel out. That will always happen on the side where the variable is. On the other side, you do need to divide. You may use a calculator to figure out what 6.4 divided by four is. For my final answer, I got x equals 1.6. For our next example, I'm going to show you two different ways that you could do this problem. For both of those ways, I'm going to start by drawing that red line down my equal sign. So again, I can very clearly see what side is the left side and what side is the right side. In this problem with my letter X, I have a fraction bar and a four underneath it. That means I'm dividing by the number four. The inverse operation of division is multiplication. So if I wanna get rid of this dividing by four, I need to multiply by four. Now be careful, we're multiplying by the whole number four. Okay, so make sure to write it as a whole number four. We're not multiplying the denominator, if you want to, you can write it up here by the numerator, or you can just write it on the outside. Notice also I did it once on the left and once on the right. On the side where the dividing is happening, the multiplication and the division, those will cancel each other out, leaving us with just the letter X. On the other side, I did multiply negative 9 times 4, and I got negative 36. Now, this is one way to do this problem. There is another way. For the second version of this problem, I'm going to make both sides be fractions. So sometimes it's helpful when one side is a fraction if we write the other side as a fraction as well. Whole numbers can be written as a fraction by putting them over 1. This gives us something called a proportion. A proportion is when two fractions are equal to each other. When you have a proportion, you can solve by cross multiplying. Cross multiplying is when you take the bottom of one fraction, you go diagonally through the equal sign, and you multiply it by the top of the other one. So I will be multiplying this one times this x. And then I'll take the bottom of this fraction, 4, and I'll multiply it times the top of this fraction times negative 9. When you're cross multiplying, it's important that your fraction bars will disappear. And that when you're multiplying, you're writing the answer to one multiplication problem on the left and the answer to the other one on the right. In this scenario, I'm going to do 1 times x on the left-hand side and 4 times negative 9 on the right-hand side. Now, this step does not need to be written down. You can just think it in your head. I just want to show you where I got my numbers from. And I do get the same answer as I got from the first method. So again, here are two different ways that you could do this type of problem. We have two more examples with some more fractions. Those fraction problems can get a little tricky. Just like on all of my previous problems, I'm going to draw my line down the middle. In this problem, again, there are two different ways that you can approach this. I'm going to do cross multiplying. I found in the past that students really like cross multiplying. For cross multiplying, we need each side of the problem to be a fraction. So what I've done, I already had a fraction here. I took my Q 
and I put it on the numerator with the number 2. Because whole numbers go on numerators. And then I took my 18, which was a whole number, and I made it over 1. From here, I can do cross multiplying just like I did on the last problem, where I'm going to multiply my 1 times my 2q. Then I'll carry down the equal sign, and I'll multiply the 3 times the 18. 1 times 2q is 2q, and 3 times 18 is 54. Now, I know these are supposed to be one-step problems, but the way that I'm doing this, I will need to do a second step because I do still have a number with my letter Q. And so for my final step, I'm going to take this 2, which is right next to, which means multiplying, and I'm going to divide by that 2. And now my final answer is Q equals 27. Now, this is not the only way to do this problem. This is just the way that I have found that most students prefer. And so this is what I'm showing you on the video. If you have a different way to do this problem that will still get you the correct answer, then that's probably fine. And if you're not sure, you can always ask me in class tomorrow. Let's do our final example so you can get started on your homework. Just like I've done on all the previous problems, I'm going to draw my red line going down the middle. This problem, again, this problem gets a little bit tricky because of the fractions. So I have found that it's in my best interest when I see fractions to just make both sides fractions. The right side is already a fraction 3 over 5, and I can change the left side into a fraction 2x over 1. Now, very similar to the previous problem, I can cross multiply. The 5 will multiply with the 2x, giving me a 10x. I'm going to carry down my equal sign, and then I'll multiply the 1 times the 3. To finish up this problem, I take the number that's right next to the letter x, and I divide by that number on both sides. In this problem, I'm going to be dividing by 10. Now, you may either leave this a fraction 3 over 10, or this makes a nice decimal, so it would also be appropriate to write it as a decimal 0 0.3. Either would be a fine answer. This concludes our second video for today.